want to start again in our Bibles in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. This session is going to be part 3 and 4 of the anointing of Messiah. And if there was ever a time that every believer learned how to function in the anointing that is available through our relationship with Jesus of Nazareth, it's today. We're facing things in our nation that are frightening, that we have not had this much turmoil since the beginning of the Civil War, that we are on the edge of a communist revolution in our nation. We're having the deep state. In fact, we had an intelligence agent this week call for the deep state to reveal themselves and to bring Donald Trump under control, which we see signs of that this week. And how many know the only thing is going to stop it is the power of God. And we need to understand, I think that's why God has been awakening the remnant to pray, awakening the remnant to return to the things of God, that our prayer life has to move on to be something greater than us. We've got to be praying for the world around us. And we've got to be moved by the Holy Spirit to lead, to shake off the shackles of Mystery Babylon and the deep state and everything else that's associated with it begin moving forward. Let's pick up here again in verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth." And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Now, in our last session, we ended with talking about the necessity of learning to live a life in which the Spirit of God can rest upon us. Now, as believers, we know that the Spirit of God has moved on the inside of us. In fact, there is a longing in every true believer for more of the Holy Spirit. It goes all the way back to when Adam was created by God. His very first breath was the Spirit of God. His very first thing that he saw was the face of God. He witnessed the fire of God, the glory of God, and there's this, there's this aspect within our spiritual DNA to experience all those things. And we realize that we have been made the temple of God, and that was God's original plan from the garden on. And that the fire of God was supposed to be in the inner court, the outer court, the most holy of holies. And the anointing was supposed to be there in all those places. And we begin functioning as priests within that temple. We, we need to break out this mindset based upon the Roman Catholic Church. The concept of clergy and laity are based on paganism. Laity literally means subpar. How many know there is no one subpar in the kingdom of God? We have all been recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works. The fivefold ministry is here to teach you how to function in your anointing, how to function in your purpose of God. And part of that is to learn how to lead. We don't have enough leaders right now in the body of Christ. We have a lot of spectators. We have remained in our Greco-Roman mindset that we have turned church into theater. In fact, in many denominations, not only do you leave the hymnal in the pew in front of you, you leave your Bible as well. Well, it's not that way among the charismatics. You bet you it is. We have signs and wonders that are not biblical, that do not call God's people to His ways. And yet, We have crowds because they're looking for entertainment. They want to see something new. They want to see something strange instead of being taught the Word of God. The true fire of God always causes a hunger for the ways of God, the truth of God, and for us to be transformed. And so let's go on. Anointed godly leadership. Leadership for ourselves you cannot lead anyone else until you can lead yourself into the things of God. Otherwise, we have the blind leading the blind. 
I've got to take control of this vessel and learn how to walk in sanctification. And once I do, I can begin leading others. And there's this concept that we see within Hebraic heritage that we first lead ourselves, we then lead our families, then we can be a captain of ten, captain of a hundred, captain of a thousand, captain of a great host. It comes with spiritual maturity. In fact, leadership in our lives is a matter of character and maturity. Now, I want us to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12. The enemy, the principality and powers, all the kingdom of darkness are constantly working on taking the fire of God and putting it out in your life. They're, they're working on suppressing you becoming the man or woman that you were created to be. They don't want you following the word. They don't want you keeping the commandments of God. They don't want you completely bowing your knee and making Jesus not only Savior, but absolute Lord of your life. They want to stop it. And so in this warfare, there's a threefold cord that we have got to begin building in our lives. Now, Ecclesiastes says, if anyone prevaileth against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Let me tell you something right now. Most of the body of Christ, we don't have a threefold cord. We have a thread. Because we have not been taught, we have been entertained, we've been given little tidbits. We, there, there are two parts of the commission. Number one, you preach to save people. And once they're saved, what we have done in so many churches is we tell them to get saved over and over and over again. And we make everything based upon salvation. And the moment you try to teach them discipleship, they start saying, yeah, but that's not what you have to do to be saved. No, it's not. But it's what you do after you're saved. And instead we have this long bench that everybody in the kingdom of God has been benched because they're worried about getting the doctrine right of being saved, which is faith in the completed work of Messiah. You bend your knee to Him, you accept His atonement work, and you submit every aspect of your life to Him. That's salvation. But part of that aspect of, of bowing the knee to every part of your life to Him is submitting to the Word and begin walking in the ways of God and not the ways of Mystery Babylon, which is fruit of your salvation. So card number one, you are called to be a leader at whatever level. Even just in the household, we read in Proverbs that, that Solomon said, stay with the Torah of your mother and your father. Stay with the things they taught you. That puts obligation on us to teach. And I wish that had been taught to me when I was younger, before I was a father. Because what we have done in America, which goes all the way back to Weishaupt's five points, is we need to have communal education. That means all the educating we put off to somebody else. And so we let a secular institution called American School System indoctrinate our kids into communism, indoctrinate them into the ways of Babylon, while we said and we do nothing. If you don't lead your family, by default, you let the world lead your family. And if you don't take yourself by the ear and say, you know what? You're going to do the Word regardless of what your flesh feels. You're going to think this way regardless of the thoughts that are coming into your mind. You pull them into captivity of the Word. If you can't do that, you'll never be a leader and you'll never move forward in God. So leadership is essential. Chord number two, your character and maturity. As God works on us in this entire sanctification process... He's getting rid of the flesh and he's building us up spiritually and we're beginning to take on more and more of the characteristics of Messiah. It's called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And, I have, and as I have shared, I have been amazed and you know, I, I normally never look at YouTube or any of these things. I'm too busy. I barely have enough time to post our videos. And so I've never looked at the comments and I started having people email me about them and many of them were so bad that I had to turn off the comments thing and they were coming from Christians. And so by the time we got to me teaching on the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the need to develop the, the character of Christ within as a testimony of who He is in the earth, I was getting thumbs down. So either it's witches and warlocks 
putting thumbs down. Or it's unsanctified carnal believers that have their own little pet thing instead of kneeling to the, their knee before Jesus. There's no character in the body of Christ anymore. Therefore, there is no maturity. We're centering up on all the wrong things. I've got to be on Now You See TV Monday night and what we're going to talk about is how Christians are supposed to behave when they have differences. Let me give you a hint. You're supposed to love one another and respect one another. Not cuss each other out. I have received emails from people that claim to be Christians that use so many superlatives they would have made the men that I knew in the military blush. It's outrageous. And it's showing how lost the church is and how carnal we have become. The third chord is the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit or the Messiah in our lives because how many know it is, it, it, it's made available to us through Messiah. And Jesus' life is the perfect example of how all seven of these function. He is our example in all things. You want to learn how to live Torah? You read the Gospels. Because Jesus perfectly walked in all the commandments of God. He's the one that gave them in the first place. We need to have that. All three elements are equally important and must be perfectly intertwined. Without all three in perfect balance, the rope can be broke. This may be the reason that the, the number one testimony that I hear from so many people that email me and so many of the threads that I see on social media is they're hanging on by a thread. It's because you don't have a rope. You've not been taught. You've been entertained. You have been given cotton candy, but you have not been taught the depths of the Word of God. And Jesus cannot come back until we go into all the earth and teach, and teach to observe everything that He has said, which starts in Genesis and goes all the way through the book of Revelation. We've got to come into maturity. Failure to develop proper character and maturity will corrupt your leadership and impede your anointing. Failure to move in the anointings will make leadership of character and maturity powerless in many situations. Well, Mike, why is this so hard? All three elements take a four-letter word to develop. And in the body of Christ, it is considered a four-letter word. It's called work. Well, salvation isn't of works, lest any man should boast. Absolutely, it's in the finished work of Christ. But that same apostle that wrote that said, we have been recreated into Christ Jesus unto good works. And when you don't have these works in your life, you are saying Jesus did nothing in your life. We must actively work to answer the call and to continue to move in it. We must actively work to develop godly character and maturity. We must actively develop to learn how to flow in these anointings of the Holy Spirit and to, and to develop expertise in their deployment in our lives. Well, sometimes how does that happen? How does that work? God's going to lead you across somebody that's going to disagree with what you say and they're going to get in your face. And how you respond to it. Iron sharpens iron. Rocks bumping up against each other in the stream is what smooths the stone. The Bible says that we are supposed to fight the devil, not each other. As we study these anointings, we must remember that they are not the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Gifts require no work. All you got to do is seek them. You have to be open to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to move through you and you can have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have seen the gifts of the Holy Spirit flow through someone that was saved for five minutes. The anointings come through much effort and disciplined use. Do you know how you get anointing oil? The olive must be crushed. Discipleship. 
King Solomon went on in Ecclesiastes 5.3 to tell us, For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. And let me tell you right now, what I'm seeing in social media is fool's voices are filling up the internet. Sometimes I wonder if those that are doing that, if they even have a life. You know, if you had a life, you wouldn't spend five hours a day on social media. I spend between two to three minutes a day, if I'm lucky. Oh, I'm not going to go down that trail. That's a whole different trail. <laughs> Woo! Guys, I have a dream of godly, matured leadership that is capable of making hell turn around and run the other way. That's what we need in our homes. That's what we need in our churches. That's what we need in our local communities. That's what we need in our government. While they're saying that Christians should not be allowed in government, it is showing because where we're Christians are marginalized that hell has reigned on the streets in our nations. It's not a matter of gun control. It's a matter of heart control. In places in the world where they have completely outlawed guns and only the cops have them, you can go to Great Britain right now and the two things they're dealing with is not guns on the street, it's people throwing acid in people's faces and killing them with knives. If you outlaw knives and you outlaw Drano, they will go out and they will pick up a rock. Has anybody ever heard of stoning? If a heart is evil, it will find a way. The only way to stem the tide of this is you have to change the hearts of men, and it's got to start right here first. Now let's look at the anointings of wisdom and understanding. The word wisdom here used in the Hebrew is kachma, which means wisdom. Now I'm going to put all this up on the screen it also means skill in war. Not just having wisdom, but the Holy Spirit beginning to download on the inside of you skill to face the enemy in spiritual warfare. That's an anointing. Administration, shrewdness, prudence in religious affairs, and wisdom, ethical and religious. Let me tell you something, if we were flowing in this one anointing, just the wisdom anointing, 90% of what's going on in churches today wouldn't be permitted. Over the years, I have had to deal with church fights with some of the associations that I belong to. Well, Mike, the church fight must have been something drastic. Was there an affair in the church? Did the pastor steal money? Was, 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 was he getting off and teaching Buddha was the way? No. The prayer altars were beyond repair. They were falling apart. And if it fell apart the right way, you could have somebody stuck with a rusty nail. And so he dared to suggest that the altars be replaced with new ones, even though great-great-great-great-grandpa built them 50 years ago. And it tore the church apart. I wanted to go down there. I wanted to drive down there and say, y'all need to grow up. Or how about this one? Here's another one. 30 years ago, the youth, the kids planted these little trees, real cute little trees, all up and down the side of the church, about this far away from the church. How many know 30 years ago, 20 years ago, that really looked cute? But now that the trees are this big around and the roots are bursting through the basement of the church, prunes would say that you pull up the trees and you repair the walls before the church caves in. They did everything but tar and feather that pastor for bringing it up. No wisdom. For I have seen too many pastors that either refused to acknowledge spiritual warfare or they did it in a way that was not scriptural because there was no wisdom entwined with it. Or how about this, You're, whenever you do spiritual warfare, you are dealing with a being that has, be, that has been alive before the world was set into motion. 
The Bible says the sons of God cheered when they saw God create the worlds, create the universe. So they're older than planet Earth. When you're older than planet Earth, they're not like us. Three days later, they don't cool off and forget something. You can't momentarily do spiritual warfare and bop the enemy upside the head and not think that a year, two, three years later, he's not going to slowly get you to cool down and begin to sin so that he can destroy your life. Wisdom in spiritual warfare is I live this 24-7 and I get stronger every year. I don't begin backing off the word. I live a life of continually pushing toward the mark of my high calling in Christ Jesus. I don't sit down. All of that is contained in this anointing. There is an anointing. If I would just learn to submit to Jesus and learn to submit in the word and stay balanced. Wisdom would say, Less major in the majors of the Word of God and make the minor things the minor things. And yet what I see constantly and what I'm getting barraged with is something that makes up point zero 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 one percent of the Word. I am demanded by evangelists that I had better toe the line on. And they have made it a salvic issue. If you don't believe in the completed work of Jesus and this, you're not even in the kingdom. Well, show me where the Apostle Paul preached that. Show me where John preached that. Show me where Jesus preached that. Major on the majors. The completed work of Jesus. Keeping the commandments of God. And even some of the things that they're pushing doesn't even fall within the parameters of a commandment. There is no command that this is the way it is. They're using Jewish idioms and Jewish prophetic imagery to create something that the Word of God was never designed to do. You know what? Go ahead and do that. And in your life and in your movement, the devil can sit down and not do a thing because you're the biggest problem that has ever been in the body of Christ because it's getting us off of the major things that we need to deal with. I want to make the devil worried every morning what the body of Christ is going to do when it wakes up this morning. The way that we live, the way we conduct ourselves, the way that we love one another, the way that we lead our families causes hell on the devil. And we have given him too long off. Understanding. Bina in Hebrew which means understanding discernment. Guys, listen to me. Because we have never known that there was an anointing of Messiah that we could labor toward, we have lost our discernment. Not only understanding in the Word of God, but discerning the times and the seasons, discerning what's of the devil and what's of God. And most of the body of Christ that is devoid of this is running around like spiritual ferrets that will chase after every sparkly they see, every new thing. You know, I do a lot of conferences. I love the conferences. But at end time prophecy, you can hear what the devil's up to and requires nothing of you. I can go into detail how, how that, you know, and, and part of it is we're having to readjust our paradigm when you get into end-time prophecy because past generations, you know, it wasn't just, what, 20, 30 years ago that the mark of the beast was a barcode. And your, Campbell, your can of Campbell soup was going to hell because it has that damnable barcode on it. Now we're finding out with transhumanism, it's the rewriting of DNA is going to be part of the mark. Because it's going to change the way you think and what you do with your hands. You see, sometimes in end-time prophecy, you can't interpret beyond your paradigm and understanding of the, of, the, of the watcher's technologies that are coming back. But you know, you can learn all of that, and it doesn't require you to repent. It doesn't require you to change your life. It doesn't require you to do a thing. You can just sit there and be impressed. Boy, now what I know. 
And what I have seen sometimes is when, and in, in fact, the very first year of the Watchmen I went to, they did some cool things that at the beginning of the, of the thing, they actually brought up husband and wife teams that were just simply talking about marriage and, and how the, you know, there's a lot of marital things that families are working through. And really, for a lot of the people, it was, it was extremely meaningful. There was a lot of humor. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of really practical applications. Did you know that Mike and Jeannie had people that had emailed them say, I'll never go to one of those again if you ever do anything like that? It's supposed to be about end-time prophecy. Yeah, it has to be all about what the devil's doing, and you're not required to change. But let me tell you something, big boy. If you don't start changing, you're going to be in the devil's hip pocket when the Antichrist comes up. There has to be a balance of, this is what the enemy's doing. See, I'm, I'm ex-military, okay? Back when the Soviet Union were doing things, we had to understand it, but we also had to be combat ready to match what the enemy was doing. And so it wasn't just learning about their doctrine of war. It was understanding our doctrine of war. It wasn't just learning, recognizing their equipment. I had to develop expertise in my equipment of warfare. Otherwise, all I can do is identify them coming before they run me over. And where I was at in Würzburg, Germany, that was 20 minutes by air. Okay? What good is it to see the train coming if you can't warn, you can't stop, you can't impede? That's where we are in some of the circles because we have, we have lost wisdom. Now, this word wisdom means understanding, wisdom, knowledge, meaning perfectly. It's talking about maturity, understanding. You know, when I first started ministry, I, um, especially when I got into a situation where I had to preach every week, it's like, how in the world am I going to come up with something to preach this week? 